All right, I just killed a massive spider. Two out of three kids are in bed. That's good enough. Let's go. So, um, this is, I'll say it again, this is joint work with Jason Bell and Adam Clay. Uh, the stuff I'm going to talk about in this part, in part two, uh, the sequel, is based on two papers. The first one is with both Jason and Adam. So Jason's at the University of Waterloo and Adam's at um, the University of Manitoba. Um, and the second one is just with Adam. And uh, maybe by the time you're reading this, the second paper will be up on the archive. Maybe not. Who knows? All right. So um, have a look at part one for some of the basic definitions and terminology. And recall that from part one, um, a group is left orderable implies that a group is torsion free. And a group being circularly orderable implies that all finite subgroups are cyclic. So a question that Katie Mann asked um, myself and Adam is that if G is circularly orderable and it's torsion free, is it necessarily left orderable? So another way of saying that is, is having torsion the only obstruction to a group that's circularly orderable to being left orderable? Right? Um, and the answer, which appears in the first paper with both Jason and Adam, um, is no. The answer is no. And here's why. I mean, here's, here's a counterexample anyway. So let let k be the knot there, which is um, the minus 2, 3, 7 pretzel knot. Which is, um, of course, this guy here. All right, so there's a artist's impression of the minus 2, 3, 7 pretzel knot. Um, and let M, let M be the manifold obtained by performing P on Q Dane surgery to that knot. Okay, so um, let's start pulling in a bunch of facts now. And we'll show that, so what, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find a torsion-free circularly orderable group that's not left orderable. Okay. okay, so by a result of me, who's one of the other speakers um, in this session, from last year. Uh, now, we proved something uh, a lot more general, but as far as this example is concerned, we know that this is not left orderable whenever p on q is greater than or equal to 9. Okay, so he's proved that. That's great. So we've got some candidates for a not left orderable um, group by Thurston. Of course, these are difficult um, references to track down, but um, we know that M is hyperbolic because um, this pretzel knot is a hyperbolic knot. We know that M is hyperbolic um, for all but finitely many. Many P on Q. And by result of Steve Boyer and Ying Hu, Ying is another speaker in this session, Um, pi 1 M is CO, is circularly orderable for all but finitely many P, P on Q. Many, oh boy. For all but finitely many P on Q. Okay, so uh, as long as you throw out those finitely many exceptional things and your P on Q is bigger than 9, um, you have an example of a torsion-free, circularly orderable group that's not left orderable, right? And even better, it comes from the context of low-dimensional topology. Even better, it comes from the context of the L-space conjecture. Great. Okay, so, I mean, this is, this is interesting for a couple of reasons. First, it's hard to actually come up with these examples. You have to throw a bit of machinery at it. But secondly, it shows us that torsion is not the only obstruction for a circularly orderable group to be a left orderable group, right? Um, so what is the obstruction? I think this is a natural question. And here is the first theorem I want to talk about uh, of ours. So this is due to all three of us from, I guess, well, it hasn't appeared yet, so I won't really put a year on it. So Adam, uh, sorry, Jason Bell, Adam Clay, and myself. And here's the theorem, is 
this is a characterization of a circularly orderable group to be left orderable. All right, so let's let um, G be a circularly orderable group. Start with a circularly orderable group. Um, G is left orderable if and only if uh, G cross Z mod N Z is circularly orderable to C O for all N for all N in well the only everything that makes sense. Okay. So there's the statement of the main theorem, is that if you have a circularly orderable group, well, it's left orderable if and only if when you take the direct product of G with any finite cyclic group, it's still circularly orderable. Okay, so that's kind of um, curious. I think it's a, a little bit of a surprising result. Um, so let's just, uh, when, you, when you see a theorem like this, uh, especially when it's one of yours, you should be a little bit worried and you do some sanity checking and you go, okay, Let's just see, does it do the basic things, right? So this is a characterization theorem for left orderability. It better immediately detect torsion. And sure enough, it does, right? So let's let's see this a note. Um, uh, the theorem detects torsion. The theorem detects torsion, right? And what do I mean by that? Well, um, suppose you have if, um, Z mod KZ is a subgroup of G, then Z mod KZ cross Z mod KZ is a subgroup of G cross K mod Z, Z mod KZ. So um, G cross Z mod KZ is not circularly orderable. So we know it's we know G is not left orderable. So there better be some k for which g cross z mod k is not circularly orderable. And sure enough, there is. All right, good. So that's your first sanity check. It's all right. Um, so we can immediately see how this detects torsion, but it's also detecting something else, right? Because we gave an example further up. Here's an example where you have a torsion-free group that's circularly orderable, but not left orderable. So it's detecting, this theorem is detecting something other than torsion as well which is super curious, right? Um, and before I move on, I, I want to point out, uh, typically when you're doing L space stuff, something is just one of the strategies for left ordering your fundamental group. Maybe you start with a, um, you start with either a representation of your group into a circularly orderable group, or you start with a uh, co-oriented taut foliation, you, perform some universal circle construction and you get an action of your group on a circle and so both both times you get a circular ordering on your group and you want to ask whether or not that's actually a left ordering and it's secretly a left ordering in some way this theorem potentially provides a different way of starting with a circularly ordered group and then showing that the group is left ordered is left orderable even if the particular circular ordering on the group is not actually a left ordering, right? So this is maybe a, another approach to attack, showing that some groups are left orderable. Um, right. Okay, so that's good. So what's this thing detecting, right? Uh, torsion is not the only obstruction. So let's, um, let's start investigating this a little more. So definition. So... If a circularly orderable group is not left orderable, there's some set of natural numbers which are detecting the not left orderability of this group. So let's give that set a name. That's called, going to be called the um, obstruction spectrum. So suppose you start with a circularly orderable group. Be a circularly orderable group. Good. So define the obstruction spectrum. Define, define the obstruction spectrum. Obstruction spectrum, um, which is going to be denoted by ob g, and it's all the numbers in that set, all the numbers, natural numbers greater than or equal to two, right? Such that g cross z mod n z is not C O, right? So it's exactly the integers. It's exactly the natural numbers which are detecting how not left orderable this circularly orderable group is. 
right? And based on the theorem. So, um, so rephrasing our theorem, we have that G is left audible if and only if um, the obstruction spectrum of G is empty. Right? So I mean, that's, that sort of justifies the name. There's no obstruction, so it's going to be left audible. All right, great. Cool. Let's get our hands dirty. Let's do a few examples. All right, just to see how this thing behaves. Examples. Um, obstruction spectrum of, let's start with a very simple, circularly audible, but not left audible group. Right? So um, you're looking for finite cyclic groups, which direct some with this thing to be circularly audible or to not be circularly audible. Right, and what you can show with a bit of, well, it's a tiny bit of work, is that the obstruction spectrum is all the numbers which are not co-prime to n. But I'm going to write them like this. Right, all the numbers which are not co-prime to n. Okay, cool. So that's a fun little exercise for you to do to get your hands ready. The obstruction spectrum of Q mod Z is actually equal to everything. And the reason this is true is because there's torsion of every order in Q mod Z. And as soon as there's torsion, the obstruction spectrum picks it up. Right, so this is kind of cheating. There's, there's nothing that interesting going on. All we're doing is looking at the order of torsion. Same with the first example. We're just looking at the possible orders of torsion elements. Um, so can we go somewhere in between these two examples? Well, it turns out yes. If you take any set of primes, let S be a set of primes, Uh, and the, if you define the following group, which is the subgroup generated by 1 of p, 1 over p, where p is an s, and it's a subgroup of q mod z, right, then you can show the obstruction spectrum of g s um, is equal to the union over p in s of p times n. And again, this is kind of cheating. Right, there's nothing all that interesting going on here. All we're doing to get the obstruction spectrum is we're looking at the orders of torsion elements. And this construction is just being very precise about which torsion elements can appear. Okay, so at this point you might ask, okay, is it true? So first, I mean, why am I writing all these things like unions of multiples of something, right? Well, it turns out uh, because circular orderability is preserved under subgroups and because of how subgroups of finite cyclic groups behave is that if k is in the, in the obstruction spectrum then every multiple of k is in the obstruction spectrum okay so uh, after these examples you might be like okay if you're if you're detecting torsion then you have to be of the form a union of multiples of primes but can you get other kinds of sets appearing as obstruction spectrums and it turns out that you can um, so one of the theorems we have in the paper uh, with Adam and Jason um, is that there exists there exists a uh, torsion free torsion free um, circularly audible group G such that um, the obstruction spectrum of G is actually all multiples of four, right? And this is um, G is the promise low group. Which is a fundamental group of a flat three manifold. It doesn't really matter what the group is, but what I'm trying to get across here is that there is a group such that it's, it's well, it's torsion free. So the obstruction spectrum is definitely not picking up, not detecting torsion, but even better, it doesn't even act like it's detecting torsion. It's like something truly unique is going on here which is kind of interesting. So we don't really know, so at this point it's probably worth pointing out that we don't know what sets can arise as obstruction spectra. This is all pretty new stuff. Um, so for example, we don't know if you can get every, like can you get all multiples of six being an obstruction spectrum or something. I think it'd be cool for someone who knows how to deal with group presentations or something like this, just to cook up groups that have exactly the properties you need and show that you can or can't get every possible subset of the natural numbers, at least that's closed under taking multiples. Cool. Great. Okay, so uh, 
I, I mean, the first few examples I wrote down there, they were detecting torsion. What are you detecting if we're not detecting torsion? Let me write that down. That's a good enough question to write down. Question, what is the obstruction spectrum of G actually detecting if it's not detecting torsion? Okay, so um, so now we're sort of going into the realm of the paper with just with, with myself and Adam. Um, so what is the obstruction spectrum detecting? So in order to answer this, uh, to state the theorem, first I need to recall that a circular ordering is a two co cycle, it's a homogeneous two co cycle, and it turns out that you can associate an inhomogeneous two co cycle um, to it and more importantly, to each um, circular ordering of G, if you take some circularly orderable group, um, we can associate a cohomology class um, in H2. Okay. Now, word of warning, I'm sort of sweeping something under the rug. The cohomology class is not just taking the co-cycle C and looking at this cohomology class. Is that you have to like manipulate it a little bit to make the theorems work, but morally, you have a circular ordering, it comes with a cohomology class. Okay, and it turns out that this the, the cohomology class I'm interested in is just the Euler class of if the group's countable, it's the Euler class of the action on that comes on S1 from being circularly orderable with that circular ordering. Okay, so um, yeah, it's the Euler class of the action in the circle. But we can define this thing purely algebraically, right? So this talk is very algebraic. There's not very many no actions, things like this on the circle, but um, it turns out to be the same as the Euler class. So anyway, I digress. What's the theorem, right? We want to know what is the obstruction spectrum actually detecting? And here's, um, maybe it's a full answer, maybe it's a partial answer, it's not clear. All right, um, this is myself and Adam. And the statement is as follows. Is that, so suppose you have let G be a circularly audible group. Oh boy. G is a circularly orderable group, um, then G cross Z mod NZ is circularly orderable if and only if right, there exists, there is um, a circular ordering, circular ordering C on G such that its cohomology class um, in H2 is what's called n divisible, which means it's just divisible by n, funnily enough. Okay, so let me write down explicitly, i.e. there exists a mu such that n mu is equal to the cohomology class in H2. Okay. Cool, so somehow um, these, so these guys here, right, my, uh, the G cross Z mod Ns, they play an integral part in the obstruction spectrum, and whether or not those are circularly orderable depends on whether or not there is a circular ordering with a certain property in cohomology. Right? All right, interesting. Cool, so I'm, uh, um, I'm not going to say too much about the proof. Uh, but what I do want to do is I want to go back to the pretzel knot uh, example, and then I want to finish off with a mapping cross group example, uh, something a little out of left field for this session, but I think it's a super cool example. All right. Um, so let's try to use the theorem to compute some obstruction spectra. Well, let's try to use the theorem to compute the obstruction spectrum of that pretzel knot example we had at the beginning. Okay. So example, so let's look at the minus two, three, seven pretzel knot surgeries. All right. 
Um, so let's let let's let uh, p on q be such that uh, p is prime um, and pi one of the Dane surged manifold um, is c o but not l o. And if we want, we can choose it to be torsion free as well, so that we're really trying to figure out what the obstruction spectrum is detecting. Now, it's not left orderable, so the obstruction spectrum is not empty, but it has no torsion, so we don't immediately know what's in it. Right? But the theorem we just stated allows us to completely write down what the obstruction spectrum is here. So let's do that. So um, with these with these um, manifolds, you can explicitly write down a uh, a presentation, a group presentation for the fundamental group. And then by Poincaré duality, you can conclude that H2, um, so all these conditions tell you that H2 of your fundamental group, KP on Q, um, is isomorphic to Z mod PZ. Okay. Now, here's a fact that um, I haven't justified or anything like that, but since this manifold is not left orderable, let me write this down. Since um, pi one of k p on q is not L O, um, no circular ordering can be the identity in cohomology. In H two, um, let's just call the group G. Right, so this is equal to G, just to save my some writing. Okay, so um, uh, for e for every circular ordering C on B. Okay, um, and the reason is is because if you are the identity, then there's a way to construct a um, a left ordered central extension which splits, all right? So this is just something you want to sweep under the rug. I'm more than happy to talk about it in an office hour if anyone has um, questions about that. Okay, but we know it's not left orderable. So no circular ordering can be the identity in H2. Cool. Um, so thus, since, um, so now you take a circular ordering, let's try to look at how N divisible it is, right? Therefore, thus um, C is n divisible, right? Because this is a group with exponent p, right? H two is an is a group of exponent p where p is prime. Um, if and only if the GCD of m and p is equal to one, right? And now you can unwrap everything, all the definitions, and you can immediately conclude that the obstruction spectrum of G is just equal to p times n. Okay, so this is kind of neat. We, that, that theorem that we have allows us to now start computing some obstruction spectra. Intriguing. So um, I maybe lied a little bit in my abstract because I've run out of time. Um, I, I'm going to finish on a one more example of computing the obstruction spectrum, and we won't really talk about direct products, but um, direct products of circularly orderable groups, but that's fine. I'm sure we'll be okay. So let's finish off with uh, an example sort of outside of the session, but I think it's a super cool example. Um, and uh, it's it's to do with mapping cross groups. So let's let um, sigma G1 be a um, surface of genus G, genus G, and let's just, to be safe, let's let the genus be greater than or equal to three um, with one puncture. So you remove a point. And then you can look at the mapping class group of this thing. Right, so the mapping class group is this group of orientation preserving homeomorphisms up to isotopy. If you're familiar with it, that's great. If you're not, it's, a, it's the best. It's just the best. It's a great group. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull a bunch of facts um, from the literature about mapping class group, about mapping class groups, to prove a new theorem about 
when the mapping class when direct products and mapping class groups with finite cyclic groups are secondarily orderable. So here are the facts. The mapping class group of U1 um, is not LO since it has torsion, right? So it's pretty easy to see, but is CO, right? So there's, there's the first fact. So this is a good candidate to start computing obstruction spectrum. We know it's not empty and we know it makes sense because it's a circularly orderable group. So a theorem from last year um, from Katie Mann and Maxine Wolf. Now this isn't how they stated the theorem, but it's how I'm going to use the theorem. So I'm going to state it as I'm going to use it. If um, C and D are circular orderings of the mapping class group, then they're equal in cohomology. Okay, what did they actually prove though? Right, they, they proved that any two circle actions are um, semi-conjugate, which means they're actually in the same bounded cohomology class. But for our sake, we just need that they're in the same cohomology class. Okay, now Hara in 83 He proved um, that H2 of the mapping class group is isomorphic to Z cross Z, all right? But even better, we also know that um, C, the, the, if you take a circular ordering, right, and look at its cohomology class, it can be taken to be a generator, one of two generators of Z cross Z. Z C can be taken, can be a generator, uh, one of two generators required generators. Right. In particular, let's let's get my face out of the way. In particular, that cohomology class is not n divisible for any n. It's a primitive cohomology class. Okay. Thus, um, C is not indivisible for any n. And this allows us to conclude our theorem, which I'm going to finish on. Which is that um, for any n greater than or equal to 2, the mapping class group cross Z mod NZ is not um, circularly orderable. Or if you want to rephrase it, phrase it in terms of obstruction spectrums, or the obstruction spectrum of the mapping class group is equal to everything. Now the order of any element in a mapping class group is actually bounded above. Um, so we know it's bounded above by four, or no, I don't know the number off the top of my head, but it's bounded above. Um, and so we know that this obstruction spectrum is not just coming from torsion. Right? There's not torsion elements of every order, but um, it is detecting something and it's, yeah, it's computable and it requires a bunch of neat little facts. Uh, yeah. So just to wrap up, um, relating this, this, this whole story to the L space conjecture, uh, it'd be really nice if, if there was a situation where we could show, where we could construct circular orderings of the fundamental group of a manifold with every finite cyclic group to then conclude that the fundamental group actually had to be left orderable. Um, whether or not that's possible remains to be seen. We can only hope. Thank you for listening.